Sin Dog is your brother from yeah. the legendary group Cypress Hill. Yeah. What was it like seeing them pretty much morph into one of the biggest hip hop groups, if not the biggest hip hop group in, in hip hop history? It was a slow process, you know. It was a slow going for them, you know. I, you know, all my day ones remember, you know, um, me putting them on stage with me, and we were really a tight knit unit, you know, um, coming up. And it was like I'd be the MC, and they were the dancers and whatnot. And then when I got on. I would bring them up on stage to do some freestyles during my concerts and stuff like that. Um, we had like a, a segment where they would jump up and really do it to my, you know, let the audience get to meet them, you know what I mean, for the first time. So it was, it was slow going, man. Um, so, and they came in very green. I remember they wanted to battle everybody, you know, and those were some priceless moments. Um, they came in very green and they wanted to, you know, just bump heads with motherfuckers, man. It was crazy, but little by little, we had the conversations and look, man, it's not about that no more. Leave that street shit. We're trying to really make some money and really do this. And when they got that, they really started to take it to another level. How did the decision come along for you to come out first, you know, and them to come out second? That shit all happened by chance. You know, we were all together. Um, I had started a group called Devastating Vocal Excellence. Uh, DVX for short and and that's where Cypress Hill spawns from right because we was all together as DVX and then um, at the same time we was we had just left our breakdance crew me and I went and got Be Real out of there because I saw the breakdance crew was really more concerned with just hitting skins after like a battle or whatever mm -hmm. but I, I had already seen Wild Style and Crush Groove and Beat Street these movies showed us that we could be more you know, and I, I felt that I wanted to be more than just that. I knew, I honestly knew, like I could do this shit for real. But in the transition of that, I bring Be Real out here to meet Send Dog and the rest, uh, and, and, and Tomahawk Funk, a Funk Dubious, who was also with us at that time. You know, um, and he, he blended in perfect with what we were doing. And then at one point, because we were affiliated with some Blood Brothers down on in, in South Central, he kind of got that virus to go in the hood. Be real, right? Be real mm -hmm. did. And then he, he went and spent some time over there while we were still doing this, this hip hop shit over here. And, and that's really when my break came, the Paul Rodriguez show came calling. And at that same time, B had got, he got shot. And so me and Send Dog had went and visited him in the hospital. And, um, and I told him, I said, look man, Paul Rodriguez, the show just called. They want me on, and this shit is getting real. I need you to just stop this foolishness, come back, and, and let's do this rap shit for real. We got a real way to get out of the hood like this. And so that's why Cypress Hill came out second. And uh, because he was still a little hard-headed, he was trying to get his last ones on or whatnot. And at that time, I was just like, okay, wherever they want me, I'm, I'm gonna go do it. You know, and, and so I start climbing and bubbling up, and then, they saw, you know, I, I would bring Send Dog um, with me, you know, um, Arsenio Hall show, you know, Soul Train, when I did those shows, and I think B saw that, and he was like, I, I really gotta get it together. And that's when shit really started to happen for Cypress. And, and that's the only reason why I came out first and they came out second. Um, the, good th the good thing is, at the end of the day, that, that we all made it. We all made it. Mm, yeah, yeah, alive shit. Not too many people did. DJ Muggs, even at a young age, he had his own idea of what he wanted to do. That's one thing I remember, it was like, he had an agenda, his own personal agenda of what he wanted to accomplish in the game. And so, whenever we were in the studio rec recording some of those early demos of four track mixes, was, what's your hook? That was the catch. Every time he went in his in the studio, and it, it was, he had a sign that said, what's the hook? And if you didn't have a powerful enough hook, he was gonna let you know. Um, and so, working with him was, was not only instrumental in that way, but it was also instrumental when he went off to, to work with 7A3. It really showed me like, I can't let no, no man hold me down from my dream either. I, I can't stop. So since he went with 7A3, I was like, okay, that 
that's okay i see i see what it is this is business and wherever that opportunity may come i gotta jump on it mm -hmm. and um and i think those are the two most valuable things i ever learned from dj mugs it was like don't let nobody stop your vision of what you want to accomplish yeah